Greetings Internet, welcome to Aaron Plays. In this episode I'll be continuing my playthrough of Breakout Normandy, doing June the 11th or D plus 5. I'd also like to thank everybody who's been watching this series for their support and their comments. Um, I did make a short little almost rant video because I didn't think anyone was watching. There was very little comments and such forth at that point. But I had forgotten that the generally people watch when they can. Um, not necessarily in the sequence that I actually record them. Um, I was trying to do a sequence from June the 6th right the way through to June the 12th doing each day. And I thought, you know, incorrectly as it turns out that people will be able to keep up with that obviously the sequence. Even though I'd recorded quite a few of them before June the 6th. So generally speaking, I cheated too. So apologise for that video's assumptions. Um, but also thank you for, since then for all the comments and kind thoughts. Um, it definitely has inspired me to continue uh, on, and, and make this finish off these two last turns for this video series and also to continue beyond then. I would also like to add that um, whilst during this, this series, I've managed to get to what I feel is an amazing amount of subscribers. I've breached the, well, breach of at the, this 400 number as this video has been is being recorded so it could go down but it to actually reach that number i am more than surprised and honored so thank you for watching thank you for subscribing um if you're watching this and haven't subscribed come and join us it can't be that bad on this side so anyway moving on back to the game the main reason why you're here not me rambling on about a loon, being a loon so so break out normandy June 11th, as shown on the turn track here, it's an overcast turn. The Allies have purchased three additional impulses with their supplies. They don't care if it's not raining, if it's raining or not, or it's overcast or not. They feel they're strong enough to, to carry on, even without the uh, actual benefits of the weather to their, to their side. So in the reinforcements phase, there were some German reinforcements um, which were being placed in Rouen here and across the actual board in what's this one called? Lavelle and Rene. Quite a few. These are quite weak infantry divisions. This is the 17th SS, so it's got two very strong motorized units and the units on the other side are pretty much core assets and weak units at that so what to do the germans do have the first activation so currently we are at the allies having six vp the germans have the advantage um, but the allies are I think easily contesting um, the seven VP areas, so that's probably an extra VP. So they only need 10 to win. The Germans have managed to build up some forces in and around the Khan area, or well, definitely in, and some around, primarily 12th SS, some of the 21st Panzer, but the Allies are quite strong there as well. Is it worth doing a counteroffensive there? Or is there priority to get someone in the actual area of Carantin here? There's only one weak disrupted German unit, and if the Allies get to go first in this area, that's what I'd be keen to take out, seal that area, Go to 2 VP. So I think that's got to be the German prerogative is to get more units into Carantin to resist the massive build up here and the ultimate link up with the, the Allied forces. But the main reason is to keep those 2 VP under German control. Okay, so looking at the German reinforcements and remembering that it's an overcast turn, so there's no interdiction. I'm going to be bringing in 
while activating this area here I'm bringing in the 17th SS to move through they can come up through via this route for one movement point two movement points three four five straight into Karen 10 no interdiction so that they will arrive in force and that's a nice three chunky units we've got two of these we'll get that in focus six seven fives that even when on their flip side they're still quite a decent size four so some artillery and some flak so it's four units that will arrive there so that would be one two three four across the bridge five they do not have to attack because they it is still their area they still control it um, so it's no mandatory offensive they still control that bridge so they arrive in strength there and that's the Germans first activation well, the Allies have got to respond before even more German units get in there. Um, do they soften up or do they go straight for an assault? I think they'll soften up first. It's still in the area effect of the Navy. They can't use the air support, but they can use the nice big naval guns. The fleet. So uh, it's giving a bombardment strength of eight against the Tem of two. Allies roll a nice nine. Germans are unfortunately roll of snakes. So you can't eliminate the units so that disrupt two. So it remains a disrupt too, but all those German units that are just spent now become disrupt one. So a nice softening up there from the Navy. Okay, what can the Germans do now? Well, they can still get some more units into that position. Let's put away the Navy. <coughs> Um, they've got some of those other divisions that are off board. Okay, so remembering that it's overcast, the Germans also get an additional movement point and, don't, as I say, don't have to suffer interdiction. So if we activate this area, where well, they can come in up to 40, which is down here, 40, so that would be 1, 2, 3, and into current M for 4. Because most of those units have got movement of either 3 or 4. Most of the infantry, you know, they're all 3s and 4s. In fact, all the infantry is 3s, the artilleries are 4s. So at 3 plus 1 is 4, that will get them into the area. So currently in there, there are 1, 2, 3, 4. There are five German units, so we can have a maximum of another five. One, two, three, four. So let's put five infantry. So they're all coming in now. Let's just check something. Okay, so I was just checking to see if the stacking would, would apply, but I mean, I could enter them one at a time anyway. So one, two, three, four, five of those units will end up in Karen 10. Again, giving the area a bit of depth. And then we have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Put the two artillery into here, nine, ten. And the last remaining infantry unit. Here. 
a little bit of depth. Okay, that's the end of the second German activation. The Allies, though, still have time. We're only on the B impulse. I say this is the main focus of this turn. So they are going to now open up with some artillery into the same area. We'll open up with 5th Corps. Artillery here. That's got a barrage value of 9. And we'll fire also the 1st and the 29th artillery with it. 10 11. Again, there's no fresh artillery in here to counter that. So it's just literally the 10, which we know is plus two. So it's 11 versus two. Okay. Germans roll four, allies roll five. Difference of 11, difference of uh, 11 take away two is nine. That's a difference of 10. So again, that's enough to make every unit deteriorate one more step. So those become twos. There is nothing really the Germans can do to answer this artillery. And that concludes the Allies' second initiative. The Germans cannot get any more units into Carantan. But maybe they can do something back to weaken the attack that they're expecting. There is some German artillery in the area, and they'll do a barrage. So we've got a three from the core artillery. And we have over here, one strength point from 77th artillery. So net four versus two. So it's plus two in the Germans' favor. Hitting the strongest allied unit. Both sides rolled seven. So, therefore, two will flip one allied unit. And I did say the strongest, which will be a six, four, five from the fourth division. Would have been nice to have flipped a few more. From the German point of view, but there we go, that's getting into to be a rather congested area of the map. That concludes the German third impulse over to the Allies. So is it time now to launch the offensive or to do one more bombardment? The Allies do have another big battery here from the 7th Corps, that can let rip into Carantan um, or go straight into the attack. We are on the A initiative, so still got the feeling of plenty of time, but there's another five steps that the Germans can take as, uh, as losses before they have to actually start abandoning the area. So. We will open up with 7th Corps Artillery for a strength of 9 and 2 divisions of support, 10, 11 again. 11 plus 2, sorry, 11 V2. Again, the Allies get the rub of the dice. So, no units can be eliminated, but these are now all on step two. Disruption. That concludes the Allied third initiative. The initiative track now is on the zero space. So, well, the Germans can't get any more units in there, into Carantan, and they cannot bombard. There's no, it looks to me like there's nothing else they can actually do 
in that particular area. So maybe let's try and start this offensive. Start something that can get the Allies off the focus of current 10. The Germans are going to open up here in Khan and try and do something around Khan. So six, seven, eight, because each, you've got to choose an active area. This is the active area. So that's why the, the big batteries come from there. So it's six, seven, eight, but then you can target a unit. So I'm targeting the armor. So it's still, and then any other German artillery that's adjacent to there, eight or in there can actually be involved. Is there any German artillery in here? No. So the barrier strength of eight is the best they've got. Versus the defense of Khan is four. So it's plus four to the Germans. Can they get the rub of the green for a change? Five to six. Not really. That's not great. Is it worth chucking the initiative over though? No, because the dialogue could be worse, and then they've given the Alex the initiative. So. The difference, of four, the difference of plus three, it's enough to flip the Allied Armoured Unit, which is three points, and that is it. Well, that's as exciting as you guess for the Germans, unfortunately. The, the dice have just not been good to them, and it continues not being good for them. But as the Allied player, I do not review that much as a threat at the present moment. That barrage would be more successful, might have done. So that encourages me, as the Allies... Carry on the Karen 10 offensive. We've now softened it up enough. We're going in with the full force here. We've used all the artillery support. So, do we have a full division? We do. So, we've got Six as the lead unit, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four, uh, six additional units for attack of twelve, one divisional integrity, thirteen, but no air support. So it's thirteen attacking. So Thirteen attacking. German defence. So the best unit was one of those from the Seventeenth SS, which is four. But he's at disrupt. They're all at disrupt two, so it's still at disrupt two. So it goes down to two. Karen ten itself gives it another two, so it's at four. There's no attack across the river. There's no mandatory offensives, so it's a straight four. So that's nine difference. In the Allied favour. Okay, Allies roll an eight, Germans a seven. Not great because that makes it ten in the Allied favour. So we could eliminate some of those units or retreat them, but they still can only take ten step losses there. And there is only 10 German steps in there. So that would bring Karen 10 into the Allied control. Yeah, because if you eliminate a unit or retreat it, and they're all at level two, that's one step each. So the Germans are going to give up their advantage. And hopefully the dice will turn in their favour. Currently at nine again. It's a complete reroll. That helped them. 
That has definitely helped them. Okay, it was nine in their favour. It's now gone to only... Um, sorry, it was nine in the Allied flavour. Flavor, um, there's four difference... Oh, there's five difference there, so it only puts it to four in the Allied favour. Which the Germans can take. Four losses. So they will pull back... Rather than eliminate. Ah, that's a good point though. The stackings. The stackings. Okay, the Germans are going to choose a retreat. And I was checking their retreat options because you got stacking limits in here effect here. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's ten there. But they still own this bridge here. Can't retreat across this boundary because it's flooded. So they can only retreat across this boundary. And this boundary, this area is maximum. So they're going to have to retreat into this area here. Which of that bridge is still under German control. So the difference, it was far, uh, four. So four steps got to retreat. One of them has got to be... The unit that was used for as a front unit, so that retreat. In fact, we'll retreat the whole of 17th SS back to there. So that was their participation, pretty much in the in this game, um, was to run across the board into the area, get smacked around a bit by some artillery, get smacked uh, around a bit by some naval guns, get assaulted and pushed out to hear whether they're on Disrupt 2, which will take them beyond um, any more participation in the game. As an offensive, or not even an offensive unit. It is a defensive unit. However though, the Germans still hold Karen 10. They're giving up their initiative to do so, or advantage, but they've done it. Well, they've done it for at least the rest of this turn, maybe, going back over to here, that puts the Allied initiative turn marker on to one there. So, over to the Germans. What are they going to do now? Can they seriously mount this offensive? Um, the strongest unit they've got here is a six they would have integrity now they've got a seven so we've got a seven integrity eight western allies defense of five plus four is nine so they're, they're instantly at a disadvantage even here so not really e e they've used their advantage up marker now um, maybe stay fresh here to counter the Allies because the Allies are going to come because again this is 4 VP so yeah um, any more softening up the Germans can do with some artillery again not really in that area um, Can they launch any sort of counter-attack here? They've got a battery there. But again, the Allies instantly have four. Bocage, five, six, seven on the defence. Whereas the Germans would be the best they can get on the attack is four. Five, six. Wait a minute, I thought I did forget adding on the additional units for this attack. Let's go back to Khan. Where's my mass lord there? Attack with a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 1 for integrity, 13 against a 5. Uh, 
That cars four is nine. That's four different. It must have been so frustrating, the German High Command, they've got all these powerful individual units, but overall their power is spread thin, even at Karl, which is that's as good as it gets for the Germans. They launched this one attack, if, they, if I decide to do it, and then it's spent, it's gone. And the Allies have still got multiple forces here to launch. This could be a spoiling attack, would be the best way to describe it. Um, they can't push on. What well, armour could? Armour could push on. Now armour can't push on, just check the rules, it's got to be a free area. I think this area, it doesn't say anything about a fresh or spent armoured unit. If this had been fresh, then definitely couldn't. And it's got to be a free area, so they, they, they could come, so they couldn't even come back here, so they can only go back. You can't just willy-nilly push forward if the area you're leaving is contested. So, mm, I thought, well, maybe the armour can push into into this alloy soft well, it's not a soft underbelly this this area which is fair enough you know obviously this is an area again there's a hexans there'd be zones control and, and and such forth so yeah let's be realistic about this it's going nowhere so it's still the german initiative what to actually do i've seen in some of your messages that oh the germans should be counter-attacking should be passing. Well, agreed, if they could mount an effective attack. But with only one unit here and here, they've got to keep those fresh. Um, the paratroopers are defending with a defense of six over here. The Germans just do not have the strength to launch an attack there. I say the best area they've got is here, and it's it's a four difference. That could go either way. And with the Germans all spent there, the Allies could then launch. Well, they've got still got their navy. Cause I think Khan is still affected by. Yeah, by naval bombardment. They still so they still got the navy. They've still got one, two, three or four batteries in here. That's four VP. The Allies capture car, and that's it, game over. So the Germans can't risk an offensive here. So they've got all this wonderful strength, you know, sevens, sixes, absolutely excellent units. Eight on the defence there. But they're stuck on the defence. You're pinned. They are pinned. Now, is that a flaw in the game? Or is that just the nature of the campaign? Well, other games I've played on the on the air period do reflect that as well. I mean, my favourite game of this period um, was The Longest Day by Avalon Hill. And yeah, it's obviously Hex Encounter, totally different um, concept, and it's attritional, but the Germans can launch small minor counter-attacks, but that's not represented the scale of this. Um, a major offensive for the Germans can occur in the longest day, but it's only when the weather is really bad for more than a single day, you know, normally three or four days of bad weather, the Germans can actually then start getting some steam together. In this single bad day, okay, it's allowed them to move some units around, but they just do not have the strength as yet to launch. And this is, as I say, this is as good as it gets for them um, time-wise as well. So, we can bring these guys on, reserves. Nice strong artillery unit, maybe for the last day. So, one, two, three, 
There's some Neville Burfers looking into there for Six and more artillery in the car area. Okay, over to the Allies. There's a run out of steam in the current 10 area. There are a couple of armoured units could be brought in, so maybe. But let's put some pressure on the Germans in and around Tilly. We can come from two areas, well, we can only come from one area at a time, but we can soften it up with some artillery first of all. So, making this the active area, the core artillery will fire for seven, eight, nine artillery versus ten. Three. So it's nine versus three. Germans roll an eight. Allies roll, sorry, Germans roll a ten. Allies roll an eight. So again, it was six, seven, eight versus three. Five difference. With those difference, makes it three difference. Which is enough to flip that unit. And the impulse marker moves on to two. Okay, well, the Germans are going to do a bombardment up in and around this area over here. So the factory's going to fire three. But we drive up one of these for four. Three. Ten. Both sides roll a seven. One difference. Not enough, not even enough to flip that unit. Mm. German artillery. Very weak compared to the Allies in most cases. All right, back to the Allies then. Impulse two. So if the roll snakes, the uh, weather will change. Okay, let's begin. So we have an attack coming from here, led by the armour, crossing this bridge. So that'd be six, seven, eight, nine, combined arms, not combined arms, um, divisional integrity, ten. Ten. On the Allied side. Germans have got four for the unit, three for the Thames, that's seven. However, the Allies are having to cross that bridge. It's a mandatory assault because... Let me just check the rules on what is a mandatory assault, but I'm sure there is one. Yes, the definition for mandatory assault is enter an enemy-occupied area that was not contested at the start of the impulse, or enter a contested area across an enemy held bridge where it's not contested, so the first one applies. So it is a mandatory assault, so the German defence gets plus one. Um, if, the unit, if the unit crossed the bridge was making a mandatory assault, it's plus one. If it was an enemy held bridge, it is, it's plus two. It's not a flooded boundary. So that's plus two. Okay, so net defense then will be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's one in the allied favor. Okay, 
Okay. All right, the Germans roll an 11. The Allies, nine. That'd be a defeat. Which will chuck the Allies back. I think the Allies will have a re-roll on that. Using the advantage, which flips over to the German side. Germans roll six, and allies roll eleven, so it worked out for them. Um, Germans, is, it's they can't use the advantage marker until the end of this impulse. So, yeah, that worked for them, and that will actually eliminate that unit because there's more than three steps of difference. So the layer is eliminated which causes that to be an overrun. So first of all, let's update the victory point. Tractilli has fallen. That is worth one BP. So let's place a British mark on that there. On the actual victory point track. Which points go up to seven. Okay. Now, the movement point cost to cross there, from here to here, was, f it wasn't a fresh German unit, it was a disrupted, uh, spent German unit. So, three movement factors to enter an area containing only spent, disrupted enemy. Uh -huh. So that was three movement factors. So the infantry have got two movement factors and they are one movement factor left. So to enter Comment here will cost two movement factors to enter an enemy controlled vacant area. Let's do that with the armor and one infantry. Which means another VP has been seized. Bridge point tower now goes to eight, and that's come on. On the bridge point track there. And that will be the end of the Allied. That's a sixth impulse. Turn marker goes on to the three. Just to go back over the, the losses there, um, the Bocage here, ah, rewind, rewind, the Bocage stops the breakthrough, stops the overrun. It absorbs one additional step loss, but there was more than enough, enough losses because it was 11 to six with already a point difference. So the Germany would still be eliminated but there's no overrun of Bocage. So, rewind. Come on, hasn't fallen. So you can all now stop screaming at the screen. It has been corrected. Tilly still falls though. Um, what do the Germans do now in that area? Well, they've got to do something about here. There's a massive gap. They could fall back. I mean, these guys can't move. It'll bring this guy back. There's no VP loss here. Um, 
they could bring a unit across from here. The literature don't, well, do remember they've got freedom of movement. Almost, it's getting more like longer so I'm using flak units to, to, to plug gaps in lines so okay I'm going to activate this flak unit to go one two three into here temporarily back to the allies so if they roll a three Weather change for all snake eyes. Terminal end. Okay. So what to do? They've got these forces here that should now can come through and attack here. Or do they attack here for a consistent front? Or do they attack? That's, that is a good defence. So the flag plus the three. Yeah, flat plus the three here. Alright, let me just move that light. Okay, after shifting the light. So, this flak unit, good defence, six plus three for the ten is nine. Still fresh unit, ten. So, not, not worth attacking it. So, attacking here into here, again, seven. 10 defense or is it worth coming down stretching that German defense even further however they can't come down with too much because the Germans could you know, if you leave it too weak counter attack there so hmm I think at this present moment in time, I think I need to use it at some point. So I'm going to use it now. The Allied Navy, or the British Navy, for an eight. Let's see if we can soften up some of this counter and defence. And let's pick on a tank. That's eight v four. So the eyes roll a seven to the Germans six. So it's nine v four, so it's five difference. So it's three to flip their armour. And the Germans can choose any one other unit, which they will choose as the other armour in the area. No, that's be still three. You need to do two any one other than armour. Okay, they'll flip a 21st Panzer Grenadiers, that's another two. So that's the five difference. Being extorted. Impulse marker goes up to four. So back to the Germans. can they do? Not a lot. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Fire some artillery? Yeah. Okay. We'll just find the one battery, so it's four into Merrillville. It's got a defense of one. 
three in the German favour. Oh, the Lords are eleven. The Allies six. The first time really the Germans have got a nice advantage. So it's three to one, so it's plus two. So that's eleven to one. Thirteen to six. That's seven difference. Two four six. Put three allied units over. Allied fourth, or turn four. So the ro four is rolled, whether changes, if three is rolled or less, turn ends. Okay, we're going to see if the allies can get lucky. <laughs> They've had a fair amount of it so far. Second armor division. It can get into quarantine. So let's see what it can do by itself. One, two, let's try and seize the bridge for three and then still cross over for six. So bridge seizing. Bridge possession plus three, attempt for a free area, yes. Is that the area vacant now? Is it a flooded boundary? No. And there's no fresh defend defender, so it's plus three. So four, five, or six, the Allies seize that bridge. They roll a two, so they haven't seized the bridge. Still trying to look across though, so attack of seven versus the Germans' best defense there. I think we pulled all of 12 this is. Uh, this is out. All of these are at zero. One is not. There's one which has got a three, which becomes a defense of one. So German defense of one. Carrington itself two three. Um, it's not a mandatory offensive, but they're still attacking. So there's enemy held bridge four. It's not a flooded boundary. So German uh, Allied attack of seven, versus German defence of four. So it's three difference in the uh, in the Allied favour. Oh dear. The Allies roll a three, which ends the turn. The Germans have still got the initiative. Um. Sorry, the advantage, so the guys can't get a re-roll option, and with that three, that armoured unit loses the battle. It wasn't a mandatory attack, but that would then become a disrupt one. So, in other words, they didn't get lucky. So they didn't manage to push or get control of the bridge. And so endeth the actual turn well the the impulse phase of the turn which we call daylight movement attack phase okay so i'm going to do the regroup phase but i'm not going to do this in detail i'm going to just do it and then um actually do the video afterwards so the refit phase well, the germans each of the refit phase counters are worth 10 so as I say, I'm going to do the complete refit phase and then show you the results afterwards. Okay, so after the refit phase, the Germans have managed to again fully restore the Khan area. Um, managed to block or get the, the flak unit here up to speed. And there's more German strength here. In fact, the Germans are looking stronger than they have in this area since the beginning of the game. So maybe 12th of June, but it's gonna be clear weather. Um, in the quarantine area, they've managed to upgrade all these to disrupt one rather than disrupt two. Do a bit of patching up here. And again, there's some bit of German strength massing here. Is it enough to counteract? Well, the allies, you can see are completely refreshed in here apart from the armor, which would disrupt one anyway. Um, and the allies front, Pretty much everywhere is refreshed, apart from Utah, 
because all of the Utah supplies had to come into quarantine to restore those units. So we're over to the regroup phase, which again I will do off camera and then show you the results. Okay, both regroups done. Um, I had missed over here for the Allies, which I've now spent the three supplies that could have easily been. There was 15 Allied supplies left over, so I've taken three off to bring these back up to full strength. Um, some units actually pulled out of Karen 10 into Brettville here, um, giving the Allies a few more options. They, I don't, can't see them being able to take Khan at present moment, um, you know, even with clear weather, but they can do maybe more damage in this area. They're still 3 VP shy. Um, and the Americans have just brought their reinforcements actually onto the map. Looking at it, I did could have actually used the 9th Division, one, two, three, in an additional assault here rather than the armor. But considering the die roll, I think it would still been a, a bit of a loss, so. Yeah, so that ends the uh, night regroup phase and the end of this turn. So moving on now to June 12th, which is clear. The Allies have got 30 supply, so they will use all of those to push the turn marker back as far as possible. The Germans don't quite have 10 to at least give them back one. So that's going to be the state of play for June the 12th. And thank you for watching. That concludes um, June the 11th. Uh, D plus 5, moving on to D plus 6. Um, I hope it's been of interest. Again, the Germans really struggling to get an offensive going, but their defences are now getting quite strong in the key areas. The Allies have still got quite a lot to do. They are still 3 VP shy. They are contesting enough areas to give an extra one, so they need to gain two more VP in this last turn to win. So the Germans might get scratch a victory just by holding on. So until ne next time, hit the like if you're enjoying the videos. Hit the subscribe if you enjoyed lots of my videos and haven't done so already. And then finally, as always, comments. I love the comments. I love responding back to the comments. And that was the key reason why I started this in the first place, was for the comments and discourse with um, my fellow lovers of bits of cardboard and paper and and military history. Well, and I say I've got obviously the fantasy and the sci-fi as well, but um, the military history is where most of um, my channel is going towards. So, so goodbye, Internet. Until next time, bye.